All right, Channel Orange by Frank Ocean is five years old today. And uh, it feels like it's been about five years for me personally. Uh, but there is something that's so special about this album still that I felt like I just need to talk about it. I mean, if you guys know me, you know I'm like, like Frank Ocean is my fucking life. And uh, I gotta get it out of the way though that this is my least favorite Frank project i guess even though it sounds so weird to say because it is such a it still feels so special to me but when it ranks amongst endless and blonde and nostalgia ultra it's just my least favorite um project overall but i still have a lot of tracks that i would go to off this and a lot of uh, pretty much all of them are good but um it's just my least favorite in the sense that it's kind of like a different emotion that comes along with this album compared to the rest of them. Like, this one is just more joyful overall, I think, to me. Even though the lyric content might be a little iffy on that approach. But the whole, like, music sounding and the, uh, the whole vibe to it, I guess, would be more pleasing and happy to me, I guess. That's just how I feel about it. But, um... I'm going to just go down the track list and we'll just give my insight to them. So Thinking About You, I mean, is a classic. I mean, that's like... Ugh. I remember there was an original version of this as well that wasn't the album version. But um, I can't seem to find that one anywhere. I don't know, maybe I was just making that up. But uh, I do... I mean, that's just like one of my go-to tracks off this album. And I think it's a classic. I still think it's one of his best tracks uh fertilizer i really like i wish it was a bit longer sierra Le leone i really like the thing is is like when it starts at fertilizer and down to about crack rock is when those are the kind of tracks that i feel like had that different vibe that i was talking about where it's a more happy approach even though the lyric content is not as happy but the music sound is very joyful i guess or it's different you know uh sweet life great song um it that that song is very unique but it's a it's a very very joyful i keep saying joyful um sounding track uh super rich kids amazing i think earl's verse is still awesome even though it's so like slow and like lazy but it's just a great verse uh pilot jones i used to just think that was an all right track until i had recently played it in my car and that bass is insane. I was sleeping on that bass hard. Holy shit, that shit rocks. Um, and speaking of rocks, we have Crack Rock as the next track, which is a classic. Uh, Pyramids, I think it might be my favorite off the album. I was always a fan of the first part um, rather than the second, but then it it finally just recently hit me before Blonde came out, and I was listening to Channel Orange a ton. Um... I recently just, it just hit me. The second part just really hit me hard. And I was like, holy shit, I've been sleeping on this part as well for so long. So now I, I really can't tell which part I like better. I still really, I think the first part will always remain the superior part just because it's just like so, I don't know. There's just something about it that is just crazy. Uh, Lost is also great. White, oh my God. That bass, if we're talking about bass, that shit is next level, man. And with John Mayer on the guitar, and I think Tyler was the one who produced White, and that is just a, such a great song. I love just sitting there on a calm, nice day, sunny. Maybe the sunset's happening and uh, turning on that song. Very good. Monks is all right. I really, I, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's not more of my go-to, but whatever. Bad Religion, another one of my favorites. Um, talk about the taxi driver. I love that. Pink Matter. I think would be uh, my favorite if it wasn't for pyramids. I think it's it's a t it's a toss up between pink matter and pyramids, but pink matter is just that one man. It's just oh my god, it's pink matter is like the song that you dream of. You know what I mean? It's like a it's I, I can't even explain it. Andre three thousand. It's I think that's actually. That might be the song that really got me to listen to Outkast and like start digging deeper into Outkast, maybe. Because that was right around the time that I really started to revisit Outkast 
you know, Aquemini, Italian, Southern Playlistic. So, and then Forrest Gump. I mean, amazing, amazing song. That's another one of my favorites. So, what else can you say? I mean, this album is very special, and uh, it's one of my favorite albums. But the thing is, is that it's it's so hard to compete with Blonde and Endless and Nostalgia Ultra just because those have such those also have such unique feels. But today is not about them. Today is about Channel Orange, and I think it really propelled Frank into this stardom that we see him as now. I mean, and the thing is though is that Frank never really had those hits that really propelled him. I mean, thinking about you could be, maybe even Forrest Gump could be, Pyramids could be, but, like, the thing is, is that he never had those, like, if you compare it to The Weeknd, for example, The Weeknd has these hits that, like, clearly got him to where he's at now, rather than Frank, who never really, like, stood out like that, but still made a big impact with his career. So... I mean, overall, this album does hold a special place in my heart. And, um, five years. So, uh, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Discuss the album. Uh, discuss Frank, of course. But, uh, yeah, five years. Give this album a listen if you haven't. At least one listen. At least one listen. Happy five years. <laughs>